Great. Oh, actually, Stephen, before you shoot off, there's a little thing that's just come in. Do you mind? Script's in front of you, sir. Yeah, OK, I've got it. Are we rolling? Yeah, ready when you are, Stephen. Hello, we're back after a very, very, very long break on the Merengue and Toast crowd. And today we will be reviewing the pilot episode of Toast of London of The Unspeakable Play. And joining me tonight, we have Callan. Yeah. We have Texas Tim. Oh, yeah. We have The Beef. Oh, hello. We have Dr. Freedom. No autographs. I'll be doing two shows a night for this week. <laughs> and we have Graham. Yes! Okay, so uh, we're going to do opening thoughts first. Let's start with Graham on this. Oh, what do you begin with this? This is batshit crazy. You've got, you've got Ginger Jane, for one. Um, I, I don't know why they reshot this with the other actress. I'm assuming she just wasn't a very good fit. Um, you have got Good House, who's batshit crazy and housebound because they're a notorious flasher. That was kind of funny. And then you have the inter planetary actor chit chat between Ray fucking Purgis and the main man himself, Stephen Toast. All because he had a wee bit of a sausage nubbing with the good lady, uh, especially Ann Overman. Very good stuff. And that wardrobe is the smallest wardrobe I've ever seen. But what the hell, I enjoyed this. It was a good introduction to the show. And all the, all the regulars were accounted for, even the wee musical number at the end. Fantastic. Nice to hear, Graham. And who knows, Graham, maybe that wardrobe was, was actually the TARDIS. 13th doctor? No! Yeah, well, who knows? Yeah. <laughs> uh, let's move on to Freedom. Okay, um, the, the opening pilot episode, yeah, I, I can kind of see maybe why they replaced Jane Cloth. Maybe it just didn't work and all that. Also, I noticed another thing about the original. It seemed like they were just a little bit over the top, more over the top than they were in the next, you know, when they came back and they redid it, you know, with yeah. current actors. Who's, uh, Dune, uh, I keep forgetting how to pronounce it. Uh, McKeegan. McKeegan? Yeah. Who, by the way, is working on Strangeness in Space with Sophie Alder, Trev, and Simon. Okay, there you I go. Same with Puck. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. So while it was still funny and all that, it, you know, it still gives me a laugh to sit here and watch it. I can see <laughs> I went back and decided to redo it. You know, mm. tone it down just a little, which made it just right on the level. All right, and Beefhead, what did you think of this episode? Yeah, like, like, like we said, it's a pilot. This was aired in uh, August 2012 as part of uh, Channel 4's Funny Fortnite season. The main season wasn't commissioned and didn't go out till October the following year. So I think this is it. You do get a feel that is very bare bones, but you're setting up characters and everything like that. Um, you get a lot of tropes that come through in the main show. You, you see, I think it is, it's a proving ground. You see what works, what doesn't work. Um, and obviously, yeah, um, Fiona Mollison as Jane Plough uh, didn't work, and you can see why Doom McKee can replace her. It went on a bit long, that bit went on a bit long and wasn't as funny. With the introduction of her, they made it a lot better. Um, and you get some background to the characters, which I'm sure we'll get on to. So, but yeah, overall, it's good. It's a pilot. That's what you need to remember. And Texas Tim. Well, I can only echo that. I mean, that's what it is. It's a bit of a pilot. Um, I, I don't think, it, I, I think it's not, it, I think Brian's right. It, it does get a bit more subtle as it goes on, the humor in the main show, but I don't think this is bad at all, though. I think it's very funny. I mean, especially why the hell do you have a wardrobe in the middle of the room like that? It makes no sense. Uh, and then I, I wasn't, I didn't think that the, the Red Jane was that bad i thought i mean she would have worked in the main series i don't know if recasting was a big deal for that i mean but you might have a point that maybe it didn't work or maybe it was the way it was written i don't know but um it, it's it's a fun pilot i especially like the fact that every time they mention the play that's some noise that cuts it out i mean that's that's uh that's I'm, I'm guessing it's because you're not supposed to say the name of that play or something but i don't know it, it, it's, a, it's a good pilot. I'm glad it went to a series, and I'm hoping that they come back with one this year. Yes, please. Come on. We need another season. And Callan. Yeah, well, I haven't seen this for a while. I thought parts of it seemed to be used throughout the series, when the, the series would 
I may be wrong, I'll have to rewatch it actually. Uh, I enjoyed it. I like uh, uh, Mrs. Portis's cleavage, which is. Yes, we all like Mrs. Portis's cleavage. Oh, it's yeah. really good. Yeah. Uh, anyway, yeah, it's funny. And, uh, and then again, it uh, most until I started coming on with you guys and you get speaking about it and had to rewatch it. Yeah, I, I really enjoyed it. I'm, I'm glad. I'm hoping for a fourth series or something. Glad to hear, Callum. And uh, for me, well, I I love this story, especially uh, the yes bit, where that's the only word he has to say is yes, and make him do it a million different takes. And then also the musical bit at the end. Uh, throughout all three seasons, this song has to be one of my favorites uh, that they play. And then also, the fir- this is the first time you hear Toast say, well, you can fuck that sky high. Just hilarious. No filter here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And uh, of all the things they could choose, they chose they chose a, a guy who is in jail for Holocaust denial. Like, ooh, how the hell did you come up with that? But it, yeah, it worked. And then also when he's talking when he's talking to the director, uh, he's doing the the good he, cop. Yeah. Yeah, and then he's like, "Are you are you speaking Jamaican? You kind of sound like you're speaking Jamaican. Like, how yeah. the hell?" <laughs> Overall, I, I enjoyed it. Now, was there a favorite part or character you liked? Uh, we will start with Freedom on this one. Well, I love the rivalry between him and you know, Ray fucking Purchase, and then especially the way Purchase, of course, cleverly gets him back at the end with the police ident photo. And now everybody thinks he's this slasher. <laughs> His landlord's so ticked at him. You know, but I don't think you could be living here anymore, Toast. <laughs> dear, oh dear. Stage one, he's under the table like, like, oh god! So I love that ending. That the ending was just brilliant. All right, let's move on to Graham on this one. I find it ironic that his brother Blair has a, a phobia when it comes to the homosexuals. Just throwing it out there, um, you know, and he seems to fire his gun every time he hears a, a, a cock pop, and he seems to get real issues when it comes to the fault ones. I'll give him that. Uh, he's a handy man. Uh, the rivalry with him and Ray Purchase is well documented. Um, I, I especially like the scene towards the end and, and the gents lavatory with the, the hand, uh, the, the dryer. Dry your eyes, mate. Very good. And the brother walks in and it looks very god ugly. But I should say, <laughs> unlike George Michael, he wouldn't have been careless with his whisper. So I'm quite happy with that. Really enjoyed it. All right. Texas Tim. <clears throat> well, I was just going to say uh, his brother, but. Graham already got there first. Mm. Uh, I don't know. The whole thing is really good. I mean, um, I mean, if I had to pick one, I don't know. I think it's uh, it, it's a great start. I mean, you just want to see more, I think. I don't know. I can't really pick a particular scene at this point because that was going to be at his crazy brother with the, the rubber glove hand. <laughs> I mean, but uh, yeah, I don't know. I have to get back to you on that. And uh, Callan. Yeah, I, I like them all. They all like those most, but yeah. It's good, yeah, it's good the uh, lively between Toast and uh, Bloody Thurtis. Um, yeah. Uh, the last solid characters. All right, and Beefhead. It's a struggle trying to find, like, what's 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 your favourite, because this with this being a pilot, you get so many of these things that echo throughout it. Um, I, I do like the setup with Ed, uh, that who has you find out through the series has such strange sexual proclivities that you know, yeah, good house isn't actually a woman of young years, she's a very elderly woman. Yeah, yeah. Never mind the sounds that you hear coming from outstairs as she's going walk about in the bush down under. Yeah. Um, crikey. Um, I, but yeah, I, you know, you've got the um voiceover work that is supposedly one word and is going to take no time, but it, it's a case of. Let's do it without the script, but uh, because he's that sort of type of actor, you still find he glances to one side and looks at the script to just check it before he goes with it. And he just gets so bereft that he's just putting so much into it. He's like, fuck. <laughs> he's just broken by the end of it. And, and, and I like it. It does create a thing for, you know, you, you get the introduction of Clem Fandango that just becomes mm. such a sort of a, a catchphrase for the entirety of the series. Yeah. Um, Although it's a dulled back version because their outfits by the end of it get completely ridiculous. And they are that sort of 
hipster element that yeah. you know no one's a big fan of these days but the, the the thing about this for me that does steal it yeah above all is is the great bloody purchase stuff um the, the bedroom the bedroom scene um it's done like a sort of french farce which is what ray purchase was supposed to be acting in so yeah. the idea of having the intentional wardrobe that is completely perfunctory and everything <laughs> like that it is very funny um uh, also the fact is that they're both sort of these sort of like the, the photos are up on Jane Plus Ball. They, they look like things that you would see in barber shops of the 1970s. And though by the time you're looking at them, those photos are already 20 years out of date. Yeah. Um, and they, they do, they look like these sort of like, uh, you know, failed TV actors that, that sort of never quite made it. Um, and that they're opposite sides of the coin. It's like spy versus spy. You know, Toast is always in black, Ray's always in white. Yeah. And they just... For some reason, they just clash. They just hate each other, <laughs> uh, and I love I love that that fight in between them. Um, you've got to give Harry Peacock props props due to he really. If you're playing against someone who's such a bombastic comedic actor like Matt Berry, and for him to hold his own to do, make a character like that that is of of a near parallel. Yeah, that is superb, and I just love the the bit the rivalry between them and, and the songs as well. It's good as well. It's um, I'm, I'm trying to think. The, 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 the song aspect to it does lend something to it. It sort of takes you out of it, and the, it's um, it's sort of, it is self-deprecating all the way through it. It's done like a sort of um, a, a comedic play of. You would say like the, the early '80s, late '70s. You know, like you have have um, adventurous theatre where people would step back from themselves and then sing a song about it. That it has got that theatrical feel about how the show is structured. So it's it's very clever and very funny. All right, and myself, um, I'd have to say Ed's introduction, where Toast is hanging those pictures on the the wall he was he drew. And then Ed says, you know what? You should take that one down of the yacht. Um, and then he's like, you know what? You might as well take down the rest. Mm. Um, that was pretty funny. Uh, Ray Purchase, funny as ever. Probably the, the guy who played the flasher. I thought that, that was hilarious. <laughs> like out of nowhere. He's at, he's at the play, do, play door. How long are we supposed to be doing this? <laughs> Until the play's <laughs> over. Go ahead, Graham. No, no, I'm just going to say this is disgusting. You know, really. <laughs> uh, before we move on to ratings, uh, is there anything else you'd like to bring up? I mean, this this is co-written as well by Arthur Matthews, um, uh, who some of you may have seen a TV show called Father Ted. Matt Berry and him co-wrote this, so you will see, you will be able to see similarities between it. The protesting of the play is sort of you know down with this, uh, less of that sort of thing. Yeah. You do you do get the idea of like um, the the name of the play being blotted out i think when it got to the main show they just called it that bloody play yeah. um and it just yeah there, there, there are aspects that run through it but I, you do have such a really good i, I think we've every, everyone's met at some point in time that person who's very theatrical very very theater uh and you do you, th this is such a really good caricature of those uh, caricature i'm sounding like a caricature <laughs> of, those, of those sort of people and I do like that it's very funny I, I think you know I, I've met a few actors and yeah uh, just uh, a few but and, and, <laughs> and, and, and a few gays um, and, yeah I'll behave yeah, 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 yeah. So, yeah. yeah. I do like that when he goes you want me to play it more cam yeah <laughs> <laughs> and that's it it's such an exaggerated in, yeah, politically incorrect <laughs> it, of course it pisses yeah. off everybody in the butch jail yeah. but uh, <laughs> Uh, well, you made a good, I mean, a good point though. I, I like the, the, the fact that this is a pilot though. It's the it's the the bits at the um, recording studio that are are kind of low key in this one. They're not really. I mean, of course, the yes is funny, but I mean, in other words, that would go on and get more and more outrageous as the series went on. Mm -hmm. uh, especially like Tim said about the, the way they dressed and stuff. They would become characters of their own. Where in this one, they're just kind of there. Mm -hmm. So that's um, that's what yeah. Also, uh, the bit where Jane's talking about, she's got a phone call talking about Asians, and she's like, what do I know about Asians? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think they meant agents. Yeah. You're an agent, Jane. 
I thought that was hilarious too. I think, I think they were trying to be an equal opportunity offender, kind of like Alo Alo used to do. Because yeah. in other words, there's there's nowhere they won't go. They'll just make fun of everybody, which yeah. is pretty cool. That way you get away with it. Yeah. Because if, if it's perceived as picking on one group, then of course they'll be taking the passport and the, the press and whatnot, or the reviewers or whatever. Yeah. So. And now we're gonna move on to ratings out of ten. Let's start with Alan on this. Mm, I don't know. As I say, I didn't, I didn't see the point in it the first time I watched it. But now I've rated it about an eight. All right. Uh, Graham. What the hell? I'll give this a nine. It wasn't the perfect, but I got refined later. Great start. Nine out of ten. Freedom. I'm going to go with an eight on this one. It wasn't perfect, but it was funny. It, it still, it'll still entertain a lot of me when I watch it. And Texas Tim? Yeah, I'll go with a nine. It, 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 it's a great start. And Beefhead. Uh, yes, as you know, Matt Berry is my Patronus. Um, yeah, it's um, it, it's a definite eight for me. You you get, I think you know what works from watching this and what didn't. And yeah, you know, only one person really didn't make the cut, and it was just a case of fine tuning. Um, mm -hmm. And you know, you know, Tim Downey, uh, Shazad Latif, uh, as as the two hipsters. They they become characters in their own right to, as well. You've got to give them props um, because you know the memorable things you see which worked, then they really ramped it up, and that's more power to the actors as well as the writing. But yeah, you know, when you get when you get going with the main show, then you're really off to the races, and this is a brilliant uh, brilliant start to it. So yeah, if you haven't watched it, go find it. Please do. Please do. And for me, I will have to rate this an 8 out of 10. Um, it was pretty enjoyable, enjoyable. And then watching as the main series starts up, it gets a lot better. As you said, this is a pilot. It's not perfect, but it does give you kind of, kind of my, an idea of what's going to be happening in the main series. Well, I'd like to thank everyone who joined me for this cast. Callum, Beef, Freedom, Graham, and Tim. And we'll see you all next year for our next cast. Hopefully before Halloween. Yeah. Make my balls fizz. Yes. 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 <laughs>